You know that feeling when you do a ton of research trying to figure out a problem and then after doing all of it, you realize you just didn't read the instructions? Yeah. Hi, my name is Jesse from Trash Panda and I'm currently making a fully recycled disc. Now today I am absolutely stoked because my dad is coming in to help me make some stuff for the week. So priority number one is to finish the injection machine, which means we need to do the barrel, the nozzle, the plunger, the handle, and the electronics. It's gonna be a lot of work, but I am super hopeful that we can get this thing done. I think one of my favorite things about the season I'm in right now with my dad is that while he's still teaching me a ton of different things, I'm able to teach him some things and we're able to learn new things together. Since the barrel had to be custom ordered, it didn't have a thread on it, so we both had to learn how to thread a pipe. We watched a YouTube video, went to Home Depot, rented a pipe threader, and honestly, it wasn't too bad. With the nozzle threaded, we could move on to the barrel, plunger, and handle. We did a pre-assembly without any welding using magnets and other creative solutions just to make sure that it would work. With confirmation that it would work, we moved on to welding the first pieces of the barrel. One thing Precious Plastic does not mention in their plans or their videos, but that was mentioned randomly on a forum that I found on their website, was that some people have actually dealt with warping in the barrel when they've welded or cut into it. So this was the part that we had to be the most careful on. We cut down some angle iron that we found in a scrapyard to adjust for the difference in dimensions between the barrel and the framework and welded that to the barrel. As a beginner welder, I've found that I actually prefer to weld things in place to make sure they're perfect as I'm going. Next up, we had to cut a hole into the barrel for the plastic to feed in through the funnel. I grabbed a scrap piece, did a test cut, and just decided to go for it. Now, cutting into a custom ordered piece with an angle grinder felt like something that was just destined to fail, but the cut actually worked and I was able to weld on the two side pieces that bolt the funnel to the hole. And with that, the barrel was finished. Wouldn't it be nice if it was that easy? Actually, somewhere in the cutting process, something happened. And when we picked up the barrel and the plunger to test it, we put the plunger into the barrel and it wouldn't go through all the way. I know. We had a huge problem on our hands and it looked like we just messed up the most important part of this entire process. Not knowing why, I decided to transition to the electronics while my dad tried to figure out what was going on with the barrel and the plunger. If you've been following along on this build, then you know that the electronics have been a significant problematic portion of this whole process for me. Now, this goes for all of life, but also this build. Sometimes things are easier if you just read the instructions. I looked at the packaging for the power supply that I bought at Home Depot and realized that I'd mixed up the ground and the neutral. After rewiring, I tested the piece and it worked. Well, kind of. The band heaters started to get hot and I'd set them at 200 degrees Celsius and they heated up in about 20 seconds to that point, which was hard to believe. So I felt them and now I can definitely say that they were 200 degrees. But then, instead of stopping at the point that I left them, they continued to get hotter and hotter and hotter without going down. After studying a lot about PIDs, I came to realize that this was just something that I needed to reprogram. So I spent some time reading the instructions on the PIDs, again, instructions. And after what felt like a really long time, I was able to reprogram them. I turned it on again and it still shot up to about 300 degrees, but then it started to come back down. And that's the way the PIDs work. So we're good on the electronics. I can't believe it. Those are done. I need to give a huge shout out to one of my subscribers, CLN Freak one for helping me with this and just being patient with all of my DMs about electronics and just my overall noobness. With the electronics all finally working, I got them all hooked up and put into the electronics box. After a ton of sanding and oiling, the barrel and the plunger still wouldn't fit together. And my dad determined that this was because the barrel had warped. My dad thought this meant one of two things. Option one, we throw away this thing completely. I have to order a new one and I gotta start over in about a week when it gets here. Option number two, go buy a torch, get this barrel really hot and hammer away on it to see if we can bend it back to straight. Because we had nothing left to lose, we decided to go for option two. And 
absolutely contrary to my expectations, it worked. <laughs> Actually meant that with a little bit of paint, some wiring, and some assembly, the injection machine was done. I cannot begin to describe how good it feels to actually have this thing done, especially knowing that once the mold gets here, we're gonna be able to make a recycled disc. If you have more questions or want to build one of these things for yourself, I'm going to have an in-depth video about the injection machine that will come out eventually. That being said, until then, if you have questions, just hit me up on Instagram and DM me. I'd be happy to talk with you and help you in the process because this was honestly something that had a huge learning curve for me. Needless to say, I'd be happy to help. So with that, we're closer than we've ever been to making a recycled disc. Please subscribe to support the channel and we'll see you next time.